Welcome to Hammer and Nails with Skip and Allison Bedell. Hey guys, here we are. We're back doing our thing. Skip Bedell here. You have such the DJ voice. Hey now. Oh no, my god! You totally did the DJ voice. Really? Yeah. D- now, 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 do the same voice, but with your wedding lo- stuff that you say. My wedding stuff. Yeah. Well, like I do. No, <laughs> when you're emceeing a wedding. I don't even remember the last time I did that. But and so, now, for the very the first sounds, time, sounds, as husband and yeah, wife, sounds something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm Allison Bedell. And I already told you who I am. So. And you might recognize Skip Bedell from um, maybe your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Maybe he he hosted the best uh, party you've ever had. <laughs> and welcome back to Hammer and Nails. It is Tip Tuesday. Tip, tip, tip Tuesday. Tip Tuesday already? It's Tip Tuesday already. Not only is it Tip Tuesday already, but we are ridiculously late again. That's what we do. Yeah, I know. You know, I'm shuffling like, twenty-seven things at once. That's what happens. Yeah. It's still Tuesday though. Yeah, I'm at the. Uh, I don't care part um you know what it's, it's still tuesday, tuesday and i feel like i've been very overwhelmed lately but there's been a lot going on i've got a lot on my mind i think everybody gets overwhelmed at certain times in their life right it's probably just like you know it's kind of par for the course when you're a busy yeah uh, i'm dealing with it differently person. than i used to though like i used to be very organized even though i was overwhelmed i i had everything organized right. but right now i am feeling like i i don't give a shit like, oh, I got to do this. I don't give a shit. Right. Like, yeah, we got those important papers in the mail to sign for our solar panels. Yeah. They had to be in by, like, two weeks ago. Yeah. And I didn't even look at the paper that said to sign it. I was well, like, oh, look know, at this. A paper, some papers came. There's like, 30 other things that we had to, like, look at and sign this week with, like, contracts and all kinds of other stuff. So I can see how that might have slipped through the cracks. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I didn't or even. I might have lost in the shuffle of, like, a pile of papers that we're looking at. I didn't. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't even care to look at anything. I don't care. Yeah. I just don't care. You just don't care. I right don't now. care. You know, though. You go through, like, the just I don't care phase. Yeah. I care co- about I, some I think things. You need to take, like, a mental break every once in a while. Yeah. So, like, that I don't care attitude for even just for an hour or so. That's a coping mechanism, I think. I think the yeah. I don't care is a way it's to either deal. either that or you just snap. So, it's exactly. like, I'm not going to snap. So, what can I, you know what? I just don't care. Right. Yeah. If I don't care, yes. then it can't bother me anymore. That's, that's what I think. I will it feel is. overwhelmed if I don't care. Right. This yeah. is like psychology that's an class. Amazing, that's a, an amazing, like, you know, self-preservation Yes. yes. In order to avoid the cognitive dissonance. Ooh. You, yes. Whoa. Yes. Was that 101 or is that like one oh one second year? <laughs> that was 101. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Cognitive dissonance. Wow. It's like when you are having like conflicting thoughts and like, you know, it's like you're, you're just... Your brain is just fucked up. Right. It so, said that right in my so textbook. You have a psychology uh, degree, and it's it's interesting because you're one of the few people I know that actually went to college and actually remember anything they learned while they were there. They were attending. So. Yeah. Well, I was. <laughs> or always, use it in your career. Actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And can you move your mic closer to you, my love? I was always really because well, on the last one I noticed I'm sounding perfect, and you just sound like you know you're just dialing it well, in. Well, it's just because you're perfect, and you know I'm just me. <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't aspire to be perfect. I'm just like, you know, I'm just me. You can aspire to be me. No, 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 definitely not. No. But you're, you'd have some really nice boobies. I would. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would definitely be my best feature. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to use some coping mechanisms to get myself through all the crap that that isn't important and maybe is, but it's just too many things like, like all the stuff growing in the garden and I have to fix hoses and I got to set up soaker um, hoses and the drip system and I have to deal with the stuff coming in the mail and we're doing the kitchen. We do, we signed our contracts. We have to become we thinking of ideas and just so many things all at once. Wow. But you know what's good about that, though? Like, you're still, like, you, like, you know, you got to find the good in every day. Like, you're above ground, right? You're healthy. You're walking around. You're doing your thing. And I'm still you ha- getting the podcast you have out. places to go and things to do. Yeah. Right? Of all the so things that we're doing. The phone is ringing. Yeah. People are, like, you know, want to be around you and doing stuff with you. So, you know, that could be, it could be a lot worse, I guess. Yeah. I yeah. suppose it could. You got to, you got to try to, like, you know. That's yeah. another good coping mechanism. You got to like try to be grateful for like the good stuff. And sometimes it's hard to find that when you're overwhelmed with things. You're just like, Ugh. yeah, right? it's like too much. Everything's yeah. too much. Yeah, no, that's and also you know a part of it is also with us being a team. 
um, and this thing comes in the mail, like just an example, you mm. know, like sometimes I just, I need to, I need you to take it, you to handle it. You know what I mean? Like I, sometimes I just, I don't want to be relied yeah, upon. I have, I have no problem with that. I can do that. Yeah. You just well, say the word and I will. Yeah. Like you went grocery shopping last week and that was fucking awesome. And that yeah. helped me out a I lot. The day that I was here, you know, working at the house and in between, I'm waiting for someone to show up and I had about an hour or so. And you know what? Let me just, uh, let me get something. Just next time you do that, do not get, done. do not get the mango sriracha flavored I try not Chibani. I do that too just... often though, because usually what I do, you, like you, you complain that I got, I, I did something <laughs> wrong. I find that the more things When did you I, ever eat the mango mango sriracha I, flavor? I, I find that the more times I try to do something just for no reason... <laughs> I just need to, to criticize. Try, try I want, to I'm help, trying to... Like, I got to fine-tune and, you. Yeah, like you're saying, like, sign, paper, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I tend to, like, veer away from those things because somehow or another you'll be like, ah, but you didn't do it. Ah, ah. It's like kind of like when we're driving. There's nothing wrong with that, though. Sometimes, you know, you need to, uh, to be fine-tuned. You are absolutely the worst passenger in the car, I have to say. Like, oh. you're, you're a backseat driver in the front seat. Yes. And, um, yeah, so either I'm not going fast enough or I'm going too fast or I got to get around the car that's in front of me. You, like, you always have to be, like, the first in line in the car. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, Why so, are you, like, there's two so lanes. One someone, lane has ten cars. If someone's hesitating, like, a half, a, like, a, uh, a tenth of a second, no. you're like, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm getting, I don't understand <laughs> those people who get in the line at the light that's, like, 10, 15 cars long. And then the other lane is two cars. Right. Why are you getting in the long lane? I don't understand it. Well, there I is, have no there is such comprehension a thing like the lines on the road in case you've forgotten. There are like dotted lines. Dotted sing- means you can pay, you can move. And double, and some of those signs are solid, which means you need to stay where you no, are. No, no, no. Not no, for you, though. Not when it's two lanes. There's not solid <laughs> in between the two lanes. Okay. It's a rare occasion, unless it's like in a dangerous, like curvy area, like on the mountainside. Mm, but other right. than that, it's dotted. Right. Yeah. Okay. I know about well, traffic lines. all I can tell you is that when we're driving, it's pretty much like there has been. How many times have I said to you, "You want to drive?" Yes. Can you? Can you? No, I don't want to drive. I want you, you to even, do what I say and do even it right. Put a number on that. <laughs> you need to drive right. No, I do drive right. You Guess need what? to learn no how to drive. No tickets. I drive right. No. No accidents. No tickets. No. I drive right. You pass everything. I said, you know what? How many times I just I don't tell you. What turn to get off of? Because you're always like, I know, I know. You want to drive? And then I'm like, okay, motherfucker. You take over. Yeah, because and then you pass you like, everything. You like nag sometimes. You're like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, I'm, I'm t- You don't know how to do I, it right. I know right. where to turn. I know where to turn. No, like, you don't. You're like, turn right here. I'm like, you don't need to give me instructions <gasps> every time. How dare you? Yes, I do. Because but the one the, time I don't, the, that's when you pass. Yeah, exactly. The one time you don't, I, I miss a turn. It's true. I'm like, you see, I have to tell you every yes. time when it's turn. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yes. I mean, you that's how it works. Funny. You You're can't complain on the one hand. On the other hand, need me to tell you. Okay, and here is why when we were in California, we were filming every season of Contractor. I drive. You drive every... Well, actually, that's not the only reason why. It's always because I have a shit ton of things to look at, like, you know, the building plans for the project that we're going to film that day, the code stuff that what we're doing. I have a million things to look at. By the time we get to the set, it's 7 in the morning that I need to know when they're like, okay, you ready? Let's roll cameras. And if I don't know those things, so I read usually in the car while you're driving. That's one good reason. The other good reason is that if I drive, I hear that the whole way. Don't miss the exit. You're going too fast. You know what? And it's never, and I can't fucking relax as a passenger. Because every time I'm the passenger, God forbid I fucking look down or close my eyes for a few minutes to relax, guaranteed you go the wrong way. (laughs) Every fucking time. So it's like I might as well drive Not because you're going to, if I don't pay attention, I'm you're going to, I don't want to have to pay I'm attention. I'm fine with you driving. I Listen, am, I, I no need you to be responsible I so not, I don't have to be. I am not too proud to say I'm the man I'm going to drive. You can drive every time. No, I'm good with that. but the thing is, is I don't Knock want to have to, I don't want to have to do it. It's so much easier I want to be able to rely on you to be able to do it right. You flap your, your lip and keep going and going You're and gonna going. You're going to hear me flap my lip, and ultimately you really don't give that much of a shit, or else you wouldn't have tied yourself to it for the rest of your fucking life. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. There are other things that, that weigh out the, uh, the nagging driver. So, yeah. <laughs> On the scale of 1 to 10, all those things being considered, I'd say that's like at the bottom of the, of, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think that we have plenty of other good shit to make up for being yeah. a drinking driver. Yeah, and I think so. we have a really we we have established a very good flow of you. Yeah, I tell you how shit gets done, and you do it. And when I tell you to, oh no, I was just going to say the same thing. I know you were, and that's why yeah. I beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> you like to think that, but that's not you don't exactly know how to do works. anything unless I tell <laughs> right, you. <laughs> right. 
Thank God. Thank God you've been around for the last six years. What did they do for the other 40 some odd years? I don't know. How did they ever survive before you came along? You are one of those husbands, though, that that puts up with a lot of shit. Well, that... thank you. I'm so glad to hear well, that you yeah, recognize that. I know you do, that. and thank God I you do. I think I'm very tolerant. You are, and thank God, and I know Other it, guys and might I appreciate it. Be like, You're a bossy bitch. I'm and out, I, and I love you for it. You, but the thing is, is that you know the inner, inner me, so you know where it's coming from. Yeah, you know what I mean. I know like that you can't help it because that's, yeah. that's just your personality. Yeah, you and, have to tell everybody what to do. And you know, yeah, so I kind of play along. Yes, with it. and you yeah. know why I'm neurotic the most part. until you get out of control, and then I get. But then you also place. admit that I most often. It turns out I'm right. Very often you're right, but sometimes I need to pull back the reins on you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and sometimes you do. Away. It's okay. <laughs> you no, know, it's okay. But, you know, because sometimes you see other couples, you're like, what the fuck's he dealing with that bitch for, you know? Like, I and know. she's just blah, 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 blah. I know. I wonder and if people you, said that about us. <laughs> you know what? You remember when we were in California and, um, and Bobby was staying with us, she... Because you do have resting bitch face, by the way. Yeah. So, like, most people probably think you're like a royal bitch, but actually you're yeah. not. You're actually really nice and you're... And generous. You're sexy as hell. Aww. And you're like really smart and compassionate. And you got a lot of good qualities, which is yeah. why I tolerate your bossiness. <laughs> so, but they don't see all those other but you things. Know like, what she... I don't, they don't hang out with you privately like I do. So they only see the other controlling, crazy, you know, like yeah. you're a little bit, you know. Well, I am a b- controlling, uh, controlling because yeah. because it's that genius thing in me. Oh, is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, because I'm I usually was, right. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, and it's like, you know, it's like I know that I'm right. So right. I, <laughs> um, I need to make sure that everything is going the way it's supposed to be. Until I tell you that you're wrong you then, know you, what, then, you're, then you're like oh yeah i don't mind admitting when i'm wrong though you know that you too you don't i like that about you though too because you many times i've said no that no that's not it and then you're like okay not all the time though sometimes you don't well like if i feel that i'm really really right and i have a reason to back it up then i'll i'll stick by it and i'll explain it to yeah, you Yeah, and then sometimes you're like ah whatever but i also <laughs> told you that i fucking love when you're right and i'm wrong because that is such a that really, that's such a fucking relief to my brain that I'm with somebody who's... I thought you were going to say it was a turn on. I was like, whoa. Really? No, not, well, it's not a sexual turn on, but it's a, yeah. it's a brain turn on for me because it sucks being the smarter one where, like, there's no brain stimulation when you're with somebody who never, ever knows something more than you. You yeah. know, it's like, I want you to know more shit than me. I want you to teach me stuff. I want my brain to get little tingles every time you like tell me something. <laughs> You did that to me before when you came home, and like you know, I had a little hug and a little squeeze. And, and your little... friend Dick Tingle came to visit. Yes, <laughs> yes, I love it when Dick Tingle stops by. Yes, I had my arms around you, gave you a little butt squeeze, and I'm like, oh, ding. Oh, what's he that? rang the doorbell. What's that? Ding, ding, ding. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, Dick Tingle. <laughs> yeah. I love it when Dick Tingle stops by. Oh. Yeah. Well, what, was, what was, I was going to say before is that when we were in California and Bobby was staying with us, and we ultimately ended up not being friends anymore through a long series of bullshit, um, all her fault. But she ended up saying to people shit about us and our relationship, some of which was like, like um, you're afraid of me and I, I'm mean to you. And it's like if, if you – are an outsider listening to us and our banter, right. and you don't really know my heart, you might think that, right. you know, but I am never, I never have meanness in my heart towards you, you know, like when we're doing our little arguing thing or disagreeing or if, or even joking. Sometimes it's like we'll talk, we'll say words that sound really fucked up, yeah. but there's zero well, we conflict. Do, we do that a lot. And if anyone was listening through the window, they're like, oh my God, they're really fighting. But like, we're not. It's just but we're like, not. And at the end of it, we laugh. And I'm like. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and, and I respect I you and you respect me. Yeah. And so I was really fucking pissed that that bitch had the nerve to say things like that and it was also insulting to you because the nature of our relationship and how we make it work and that we're both so happy who the fuck is anybody to judge it and say that i'm anything towards you you know if you're happy i'm happy right well you got to look where things come from you know what i'm saying like i'm not a, people who are jealous I'm and not, they really, wish they had i'm not really insulted by really much that anybody can say because i don't really give shit so but it pisses I'm me happy, off i'm happy with me i'm happy with us so you know, me if too else got a problem with it you know they can there's the door so but i just i just don't you, you, i just don't like when people have the fucking nerve to open their mouth about shit mm. i don't I, i'm almost like mama bear with you like i don't want i want to protect when people right. talk shit about yeah, you you are a little mama bearish with me yeah, yeah like 
I, I noticed that too, like a lot with like, you know, of our production stuff and like, you know, deals that we do with the shows and things like that. And, and I, I've no, <laughs> yeah. I, I've noticed some emails and some conversations you've had with people and I'm like, that's not really necessary. You know, like I, I can have that conversation myself when you're, you're like, you just take it upon yourself to step in and like, Oh no. Yeah. No, oh, I don't, no. I don't, I, I am not going to watch people treat you in any way other than with well, the I utmost respect and to give you what you deserve. You know Always. You definitely got my back. We're, we're definitely a unit. Yeah. Team, I love that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. 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 Fuck you haters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't like. I, first of all, I'm, I'm happy to say that I, I don't I'm not really aware of very many at all. Um, if there are any still, I know when we're airing the show, we, oh, you always get a little bit of like you know people that like you know this is bullshit or whatever. But I, I, I same one ear and out the other. But um, I don't really pay much attention to any of that stuff anyway. I've never really. I, I don't care. No. You know. So no. no. You really. know. I. I, I think, think I'm really... in my own little bubble. Yeah. I, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Just, and you know, people also when they're alone and they can't maintain a relationship and they're jealous of what you have, that's more incentive for them to talk shit about what you have yeah. and to put it down. Because the more that they put your good relationship down, the more they're feeling like they're not missing anything. You yeah. know, like we don't have anything. Well, I can only wish that you know other people are have a good relationship and happy it's, it's, you know, it's not easy to find that it's um, really very hard to find no that. I can't see now you're such a good hearted person and I'm like fuck that bitch I hope she's never happy uh, <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't deserve happiness you know like I think a lot of people um, are in relationships and probably for certainly for the wrong reason a lot of people do a lot of things for the wrong reason they get married for the wrong they reason stay they stay for the wrong reason stay for the wrong and reason. we've all done it they have babies for the wrong reason they yeah. do a lot. They make and a, we've all a, done a that a lot of bad life choices that have you know at like everlasting eternal yeah. consequences yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like when you i think if you're lucky enough that you can figure it out in one lifetime it, even if you're older when it happens and yeah you, then you made all those mistakes and you meet the right person and you figured out all the shit not to do it's like you know it's it, i think it's a blessing you know it's the second time around sometimes can be and maybe it's the third second or fourth or fifth. Second time around yeah do it one more time. See, now you're thinking like a I'm disco t- song. I'm thinking of Frank Sinatra second time around. What? <laughs> he has a song? Yeah. How's it go? I can't think of it right come now. Come on. It'll, it'll come to me. Hey, I've never heard that. Is it a popular song? It is. Well, Sing it's, it. It's one of his popular songs. Sing it. I'll let you know when I when it comes to my head. I know he has a song about that, though. I can hear the kind of hear the lyrics, but I, I don't. I can't hear the melody. You know what? And now that we're, I just said it, and I just sang the, uh, the main lyric, um, mm. that's a good song. I'm going to have to look it up. Oh, yeah, well, add it to my go. playlist. Okay, add it to your, yeah. Yeah. Add it to your playlist. Yeah. So, we have going on? many things going on. What is uh, We forgot to mention that we went to the, what's it called, um, the gender reveal party for your uh, sister. Can you break for one second? Okay. So we went to the gender reveal party, and we were um, thinking, we both had the same thought. We were keeping our fingers crossed, hoping it would be a girl, but believed that it was going to be a boy, and we were both right. It's, it's a boy. That's right. She cut the, you know, they had the cake. I thought that was pretty cool. I've never seen that before, this whole yeah. gender reveal thing. I didn't like, know. Is it, new, is it a new trend or something? Y- I, yeah, it's one of the long, that new bullshit friends. that everybody has. Have, like, you know, like when you go through that time of your life when all your friends are having babies? Yes. I, I don't have any friends that are having babies. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what the baby trends are right now. Yeah. Well, I thought, see, and how much I know, I thought that it was the, like the cake, the, the icing. Like, And when you open the box, you're like, ah! But it turns out the cake is just frosted with like white, right. and it's the cake on the inside that is colored blue or pink right. to tell you what the baby right. is. So you got the you got the couple, mm-hmm. you know, getting ready to cut the cake together. Everyone right. gathers around with their Ooh, cameras on, ah. on cue, ready to take the picture. See now, I, I knew when they started slicing it too, because the, Stephen the, was pulling his knife up and down, yeah, up and the, down. Yeah, the knife was going up and down. And I saw than, a blue, than like four. Yeah, I saw a blue <laughs> crumb. I was like, Ugh. yeah, the first, the first time he <laughs> dipped it in and pulled the knife out, and like you know, a couple of cuts. I'm like, oh, it's blue. <laughs> It was like, okay, you ruined the secret. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. pretty cool. Like, that whole concept is actually... Yeah, you know, it was like, it was, it's nice to find out in that moment, but I just find it amusing how so many people make such a big deal of it, because really, it's only two choices. 
<laughs> yeah, but I think and you're going to be happy I, with I either think one. That it's cool. Like I have never, you know, I've never been part of. It's that. nice to share it with everybody at the same time. Right. Yeah. So you can gather all your friends and your family, and they they had an envelope for like over a week because yeah. she got the test results back, but she wouldn't open the envelope. Yeah. You know, in preparation for this party, and then she gave the envelope to the baker. Right. All right, so I, I never heard of such a thing. So he's yeah. got the test results from her blood test or whatever, whatever Maybe test Maybe it was took. a she. And, uh, so she baked And then the they cake. made the cake based upon those results and yeah. gave her the letter back, but she kept it sealed. Oh. I'm like, how did you... How did you like yeah. not want to open that letter? It's yeah. like being a kid, like on Christmas Eve, you know, there's like presents under the tree. Yeah. You don't want to sneak down, you know, like. So now we, we know we're having a boy, and yes, um, we are. and I think that I think I said it. We need we need to register as well. Oh, oh my God, yeah, because there's be lots of baby activity yes, here. Yes, yes, we're going to be having all the baby stuff here too, oh, good, because you know it's not enough. you're not going to want to haul all that bullshit back and forth every time you take no, the kid. The kid's got to have a whole uh, a whole separate setup. setup. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So we got to find a place to put all this shit. <laughs> you better start building the other half of the attic. I don't have a place to put my own shit. And I make that. And I got to put like cribs and strollers. And, do what you did and... upstairs for the cat room, and then do the other half of the, the baby other side. on the other side. Yeah, we have like the whole top of the house the attic which was unfinished and, yeah. and one half of it i finished for the the cat penthouse yes um i don't know if you guys have heard about that or not you probably have some of you but it's it's you know like a, a vaulted ceiling that goes up into like skylights and we got these big cat trees that like go up into the skylights and they climb up them and hang out in the sun and we if you're a it. cat it's basically like paradise yeah you know? it is so, it's there's everything in there they've got every type of cat tree cat bed cat toy they've got heated beds with where i actually literally plug they have them a water in fountain. they have a water fountain and they have i give them the best quality food and Those, they have a separate room for five litter boxes the so dogs they stay cats. clean yeah, there's, there's a poop room up there, which is actually really, you know, got ventilation in it. It's yep. got window in it. I thought of everything because I'm like, first of all, I'm allergic to cats. So when you and I moved in together and you got all these cats and I never had any cats, I'm like, this is going to be like fucked up. What about, how am I going to do this? You know, like when we got came to the house together and you brought all Would your you animals from do, your last house. Do for love. Oh, yeah, I did everything. You <laughs> did everything and you don't give <coughs> up in I, my world only. This is karaoke night at the Bedells. What you do for love? <laughs> what I would not do. Eric, karaoke Eric would be so proud of you. Right? <gasps> That's right. He would sing that song. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, back to the cat room. So that was one of the first things. I pro- the first thing. I Off mean, like key, Eric. a few days after we moved into this house, I started building that room because, like, I need a place to put all these animals so they're not like in my face all the time. And so that was priority number one. Which we did, and you know it's an unfinished space up in an attic. No heat, no air conditioning, no water, no lights, no nothing. It's just unfinished, no insulation, nothing. So we basically finished the whole place and made this cool little like penthouse getaway for yeah. them up there. I it's love perfect. that I've got they the close water. The door, they go up there. We can just counter keep, keep everybody up there, and yeah, you know, yeah, it's really it's 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 a dream come true. Well, yeah, if you are uh, fortunate enough to be one of our pets, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, and I've got there. <laughs> it's decorated very modestly. It's not like a shit room. I have one picture of everybody, and it's in black and white, but I left their eyes color. And they all have the same frame, and so I've got like a wall with nice pictures on it, one of it's everybody. It's like a photo gallery up there on the wall. Of, yeah. Uh, like a... a um, like a professional picture of, yeah. like of each one of them, like a uh, like a portrait type yeah. of picture, you know. With and that's right next to my yeah, that's, recliner. That's pretty cool that you did that, like a little collection of all of them. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and it's next to the recliner, so that I can chill out up there. It's just a really cool spot in the house to it hang is. out. I like to hang out up there sometimes. Yeah, I wouldn't even mind sleeping up there. Like if I had like a, my blow up mattress. You piss me off. You just might. That's where you'd be sleeping. Um, you, you just might. Uh, I don't think so. You'll be out there in the tool shed or in the cat room. So <laughs> make up your mind. <laughs> Um, I just want to say that it's lucky that our couch is comfy as well. You're like, I don't think so. But I don't think so. I think out of our entire, entire relationship, I think I only slept on the couch once. Mm. Once. Yeah. And I think that you probably didn't notice because you were drunk. Oh, yeah, that's possible. (laughs) I think it was very early on when we first moved in here. We had like an argument one night. We came back from a party or something, whatever it was. And I probably, you know, know, if I recall, I had too much to drink and you were... Whatever it was, but yeah, I think you slept on the couch. I, actually, not even the whole night though. I think about halfway through the night you came in. Yeah. Like all right. Yeah, hey, I never did the whole night. Yeah, no, no. I never. can't. I can't because it's. No. I can't. No. Because no. I can't sleep. Yeah, you were like okay. <laughs> no, you were. Oh no! no I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Um, oh, so at the party, um, there was, we brought Milo with us, of course, and there was a big pool, and Milo swam for the first time. Oh, that was It was cool. adorable, yeah. and we got a little video of it. It's so cute. I was in my bathing suit. Dog, yeah, like yeah, it was so it. fucking cute, and he was like afraid, but he did it. But I'm not gonna put it up because I was in my bathing suit. I thought you looked good in that bathing suit. You did. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, because I was like the boobies were banging. Yeah, they were, but because I was crouched over, you know, like bending over a little bit, the stomach area wasn't so sweet. Yeah, a little so. tongue lap. <laughs> you know what Dunlap is? A tire, you asshole. No, nah, well, kind of. Yes, yeah, Dunlap is when you belly Dunlap over your pants. <laughs> That doesn't make any you sense. Belly done lap over your pants. I don't. That doesn't make sense. It like lapped over. You know, like, it like. No. When is the word lapped over uh, even in a word, an expression? All right. Well, not. For Did you, you just make that up? Uh, not for you, but you know. A done lap is a tire, and a tire around your waist. That's what it would mean. Well, I say it the other way. <laughs> the other way. There is no other way. <laughs> but my belly done lap over my belt. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't ever look in the mirror and say that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. God. Well, I'm going to, I don't know, I mean, if I can maybe do some um, movie editing to get <laughs> for myself, maybe I'll put it up. Um, so I had noticed, because I had my hair up that day, it was fucking hot, and I knew that like I didn't look that great because of the hair was up, so I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't in any pictures, like, that hit. The yeah, one you, person. you were not, like, really into being photographed that day. Like, there was a bunch of times I took pictures with, like, my mom and dad and, like, cat and everybody. And, yeah. like, and, like, nobody you, said, come on. Nobody. Well, I, nobody should have to say that. Like, get in the picture. Like, you know, nobody said, stay over there. Like, I don't know. Like, why would you think that you shouldn't be in the picture? But I'm not going to, like, well, if, if you're not getting up to get in the picture, maybe some, I, I've seen you sometimes, but you don't want to be have pictures taken. Yeah, so. well, what I did was the next day after, like, all these pictures were posted on your sister's Facebook page, I then downloaded all of them, and I found the best picture of me in oh, my that was phone, great. and I photo edited me into every single picture. That was great. But it was yeah, like yeah. I was in every picture, facing both directions. You know, depending you on the had picture. Like a big head though, like compared to everybody else's. Head. But my no, it's, it was because that was my good hair day. Oh, it was that, that when was? I took like when yeah, I had like a big beach hair day. Yes, uh, yes, yes. And in case you guys or you girls, I should say, don't remember my beach hair tip, I gave it. I think it was about three episodes ago. So I just got was a. Was it on a tip Tuesday? I think it was on a tip Tuesday. Really? Maybe it was two weeks ago. Well, I, I must have been totally out of tips. I had. <laughs> No, I have tips too. Fuck you. You do, you do. I had a really good, and and even though I look like shit, like my hair right now, because it's fucking hot and humid outside today. It's really, 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 (coughs) really bad. But um, I'm telling you, this thing, this 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 new technique that I'm using, it is like a winner. It is a guaranteed awesome hairdo every single time, and it's so fast. Whatever you do, just keep doing it. Ceramic space heater. You keep doing that, and I'll keep doing you, and, and we're all happy. <laughs> and you know what? Also, ladies, I was thinking that somebody's probably thinking to themselves, "Well, that's like having a diffuser on your hair dryer." And my answer to that is, no, it's not, because I've I have a diffuser. I've had many diffusers, and air still comes out of the diffuser. Is my first um, my first dispute, and my second is is that you still have to hold the hair dryer with one hand and use only one hand to then cup your hair and style it while you're drying it. So with the space heater, you put it like on a table or a desk and then you lean over and you use two hands to scrunch your hair and hold it in front of the space heater. And when you're done drying your hair like that, just you stand up and you're like, oh my God, I'm glamorous. Nobody's better than me. Wow. Really? Is that what happens? Yeah. I got to try that out. (laughs) Jeez. All I need is a space heater? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like, what's um, necessity is the mother of invention? Yeah. That's how I came to discover because I just, one day I just had some, like, my hair was wet and I just didn't have a dryer. That reminds me of the day when I made my spork. Yes. I saved it because it's, it's You're just, so funny. It's, yeah, I'm so did, proud of you. Because <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so proud of you that well, you even it's, thought it's, to do it. Wasn't, it. It's, I really had no choice. It was either that or I'm eating my salad with a, with my fingers. So it's like I'm yeah. on a job site where there's, we're like out in like the rural part of Long Island. There's no nothing around. We're like out in the sticks. There's no power at this uh, this site. We're running generators and everything. So we you know we're all brought our own lunch to this site. 
every day, and I go to open up my my lunch uh, bag or whatever, and I I had made a salad, like leftover salad from the night earlier, the chicken in it and all that type of stuff. But it was a big salad with a lot of lettuce and vegetables and whatever, and I forgot the fork, so. I, you know, I got all the dressing mixed in it and everything, and it's like, you know, it's really kind of oily and everything. I'm like, son of a bitch, and I was really hungry, too, and I, like, all I had to eat was this salad. So, because it was so hot that day, we all had, like, gallon jugs of water, like the big plastic gallon jugs. So, what I had done was I took the handle, like the jug handle that comes, the plastic part that comes out. It's kind of like a hollow tubular handle that molds back into like the Like a bottom. gallon, our typical gallon container. Yeah, and I cut that handle off. Um, at the top and then at the bottom where it connects back to the, the, the jug, but I cut it like kind of like with a big circle at the bottom of it. And then I, sh- I took the uh, pair of tin snips, which we were using on the siding job, and I fashioned that the lower part of that into like a what looked to be kind of like a spork. Yeah. Uh, and, and I ate my salad with that jug plastic gallon. I love it. Jug you're, like, you're like a prehistoric gorilla. But it worked, man. It was like, <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, when you when you came home when with you that got thing, hungry, it's like you don't even care. I've never seen anything like it. I just was I I'll never forget my what I felt when yeah, I saw. Yeah, you were saw. amazed. You were like so <laughs> proud, like like when the kid comes home with like his first like arts and crafts like yeah. thing in school, like in kindergarten. You were like, oh my god, I'm gonna hang this on the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, it was Very a- different from when you told me that you made use out of the bag that you had your lunch in to actually take a crap in. When well, you didn't have a toilet at yeah, the job site. Yeah, that was another, yeah, I think that, that was a different job site that the porter potty had not shown up yet at, and there was no plumbing at that job site yet, and I'm like, well, gotta take a dump, uh, I'm not really sure how this is gonna go, but it's gotta happen right now, so yeah, I uh, proceeded to remove all the contents of my plastic, uh, like I had like a, you grocery know, store pl- bag, plastic bag from a grocery store. And went out behind the uh, the garage there at the property and did what I had to do right in the bag and knotted that thing up and like a net through in the dumpster like it never even happened. And you used your I guess napkins, you have the wipes with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. You well, always I, keep wipes in the truck. I always keep wipes in the truck. Yeah, you gotta keep a container because you never know and a roll of toilet paper, you know. Yes. I keep a couple of rolls in the trailer or in the truck because you just never know. You Especially never on job know. sites that don't have any water or electricity, like what are you gonna do? You gotta wipe your ass. There's no porta potty there, or whatever. Like you know, you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah. So yeah. I, I have done a lot of uh, improvising when it comes to that. Yes. Oh, my God. Speaking of job sites, we got, you got, more boxes. I am so excited. Milwaukee was just amazing. They overnighted that stuff, by the way. Oh, really? I was yeah. wondering how fast it yeah, Overnighted. Like, I had finally some great stuff. I had finally gotten around to the list of the products that they had put on an email that they had shown us while we were there. Right. And they said, if you're interested in any of those products as you know, to sample, circle it, let them know. So I finally went through the list and I circled it up. Well, it was basically like 10 pages. It's of, not even, they're not even done sending you shit yet. Yeah. Because some like, stuff hasn't like been released. 10 pages of like bulleted tools. There's probably like yeah. a couple of hundred different tools that when we went to the Milwaukee Expo for a couple of days, as we did for the DeWalt a few weeks later, you spend a few days just like, you know, test driving all their newest tools. And then at the end of the whole thing, they're like, well, let us know what you like and we'll send it out to you so you can try it. But of course, they want you to take pictures and post it yeah. and talk about it and promote it. And we them. will. And absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, my God. I have so many things to do that with from DeWalt, yeah. too, that's been sent over here. Yeah. It's all that, forthcoming. It's just that. Just having a time the, to yeah, do it. Uh, we're going to need to do like a whole photo shoot thing yeah. of just tools and demonstrations yes. and stuff. because. Both of those companies have sent over some amazing stuff, and I'm so yeah. excited to share it with them. And I also like to read the other guys' stuff who was there at those shows to see what they think about the tools. So then with other people's opinions in mind, you can see how right. how it really, if you feel the same way, right. you know, if, they, if you're applying it the same way that they are, if you're using it for the same type of job. So it's Yeah, cool. there was a number of people that got invited to these, you know, once a year expos, most of which are like either people on shows like us or they're people that are like are writers for blogs about tools or tool magazines or hardware, you know, something to do with construction and tools or whatever. And, and these are the people that they want yeah, to talk they're, about. Yeah, they're magazine stuff. writers. They're people w- that yeah. are just tool addicts who – who just love to post about their tools on like Instagram and they've got thousands of followers. It just fucking blows my mind that these guys have thousands of followers and it because they know how to work the Instagram, there's a whole fucking science to well, it. Well, they take a picture, like a couple pictures every day of a tool and then they talk about it, like using it, you know? And, yeah. and, like, and, and if you're a tool nut, 
they had all their followers are all tool freaks. Yeah. So it's like it's a great way to get reviews on tools and find out, you know, if you're looking to get, let's say, a screw gun or a saw or whatever, you can go on there and flip through the guy's picture yeah. and you can, like, you know, get... The or group. you can even ask them and, you know, they're get probably, it. they have a blog, they probably yeah. used everything. I always said that Matt D'Andrea from CarCast, Adam Carolla, yes. he's got the best job because yeah. he has, like, a blog and a podcast about cars, about yeah. mostly about sports cars. So, like, so many times we went to Corolla Studio, and there's Lamborghinis, there's Ferraris, there's Bentleys, there's, like, everything you could possibly imagine, McLarens, like, million-dollar cars that Matt D'Andrea would just get sent over from the manufacturer to test drive for a week. Here, take it, take pictures with it, take it down the PCH, have fun, let us know what you think, and then write about it and talk about it on your podcast. So I'm like, that guy's got the job, man. I mean, yeah. I'm like taking pictures of a fucking circular saw. He's driving a Bugatti down the PCH. <laughs> like, what's wrong with this picture? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Tough. It's tough yeah. Yeah. For some people. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's... Well, on the flip side, I also, because I'm into the makeup, like you are into the, the tools. And so I'll get like obsessed with something like lipstick colors. Like all of a sudden I'm looking for lipstick colors and I'm on all the different Instagrams for the, for the brands, right. but the brands now post pictures on their Instagram of people who are wearing the product. I don't know if they're like models or what, but some people that they're posting on there, they have a lot of followers. So now I'm looking at their Instagram and then I went on to YouTube because I wanted to get, Kylie Jenner has a, a whole makeup line of um, lipsticks right. that she put out and there was like a whole lot of stuff going on you with this. you have a little girl crush on Kylie Jenner? Because I hear you talk about her a lot. No, she's a child. Oh, I, I just, I, I... Is it Kylie or the other one? The other, uh, Kendall is the older Kendall. one. Kendall, that's what yeah. No, they're, they're children, my love. Uh, well, how old is Kendall? Like, she like... 18, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I she was like no, 20. Kendall is like 19 and Kylie is like 18. Uh. Yeah. No, I'm just, it's the makeup. It's their style. I just... Oh, it's not the girls. It's the, the, girls. No. It's the makeup on the girls. Yes. Gotcha. And, yeah. Because uh, Kylie, like me, has, like, no lips. Uh. None. And she gets hers enhanced with fillers. Can you imagine if, you, if it was possible to switch the top with the bottom? What? <sighs> Can you imagine if you were able to, like, switch, like, the, 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 the lower ones with the upper ones? You know, like, you what? Get... <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> imagine that. I know I can't imagine. Why would I? Then what you that... wouldn't have any problems. <laughs> what is it you trying to say? Because you're saying, like, you know, women have small lips, so they get, you know, like, injections or all the stuff that they do to, like, make them yeah, bigger. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So. What does that have to do with the bottom? I, I'm making a joke. I don't get it, though. You Are you insulting my junk? No. I'm, I'm just the opposite. I'm saying it's perfect. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, I like what she's done to her non-existent lips, which are now very full. And, um, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> And it's just a picture of that. Think about what an interesting smile you would have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you are awesome. just... Sometimes you just really... Um, you, you slip back. I don't know. Into I know. caveman. I know. Yeah, I, just, I, I, just, I can't help but the dude comes out every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't help but just roll my eyes. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Uh, that's nice. All right. Whatever. Um, anyway... So I was looking at uh, YouTube yesterday at videos to see the reviews of her lipstick line, and these are fucking p nobodies. They're girls <coughs> sitting at home with their yeah. webcam, tr show, trying on the makeup, telling people what they think about it, comparing the colors, and they've got like over a million, some two million views. Yeah. These are nobodies. Like... Well, evidently they, they are. But they have followers, so they're right. somebody. It's like well, listen, here's unbelievable the thing. You gotta have to the me. time to do it, or you got to have a team of like you know uh, um, digital people that do that stuff for you, which a lot of people do. You know, a lot of people that really are very much into the internet marketing, especially Instagram marketing and all that. They have people that just sit all day and post for them. You know, and no, these they, are girls who don't have anything to do. Right, but that's do that. my point. Either you have the time to do it yourself and you do it, you know, consistently every day, you know, multiple posts a day is what it takes to do that. And you got to be like tactful. You got to know how to, you know, do certain things with the hashtags and all that to build, you yeah. know, that. And I know what to do. You it's do. just the time it yeah. takes. I, Me I too. Can't. Take a look at my Instagram. The last picture I posted was like. <laughs> I can't seem to bring ago. myself to do it all the time. I know. It's, it's just. just 
Yeah. I don't want to. You it, know, it's, it's like feels, I want to do nothing sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it feels a little bit like, you know. A job. Like a chore. Yes. Like, like I know I need to be doing it. Yeah. But I'm just like, I just don't quite have the energy to do that right now. I'll put the yeah. thought into all the words I want to say about it. And me. once we get on to the another picture, show. The picture part's easy. If I could just oh. post a picture, it would be great. I, I have a thousand pictures that I could send right now. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, check this out. Yeah. But like. You know, people want to hear to? what people want to hear what you have to say about it. They yeah. want to talk about right, it. Right, exactly. So just like, Gotta get creative. Oh, I'm just like, oh, you know, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. And then like a week later, I'm like, oh shit. I I've been that. getting tool followers because I've been posting the pictures of you with all the tools and doing the hashtags and everything. And then you're just reposting, or should I say, I'm taking your phone and just reposting it right. to your Instagram. Right. I'm regramming. So yeah. It's I'm take the time that I am taking to do it is your stuff and I'm getting the tool followers. That's what I'm saying. Well, this that, I'm that, tagging all these guys. Yeah, they're not following you because you're because of my lipstick. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> they're like, oh, what's this? They're it's, following because of your lipstick. No, they're they're following you because there's a hot chick that's posted something about no, tools. I'm like, they, oh, wait a second. Because they up. just like that they want to see what the tool stuff. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Once we get another show also, because there's usually like the ebb and flow, you know, like you get the people who are now all of a sudden interested in you if they like the show that you're on or if you got followers from Fox and things like that. It goes up and down. But the number of followers that we have is actually just funny compared to these people who are just like high school students and post about yeah, fucking nothing. Like I just said, you got to be on it. You got to be. It's a job, you know. You yeah. have to pursue. We need it. to hire a child to do our social you media. Know, I think you're right because, like, social <laughs> media people are really expensive. You yeah. Know? So it's like I think you just need to hire like a high school kid because who better? That's what Sarah you... Bendrick kept saying. That like she's uh she's from uh, DIY Network. I hate my yard. She was hiring a, like a an intern, like a right. school student, right. to do her social media for her. It's a great idea. But the thing is, is that we don't have the kind of money to fucking salary somebody. Like we would have to. Like, really get a kid who's got half a brain because don't forget, when somebody's posting on your social media, they're also representing you. And that could be a problem. Yeah, it absolutely can be a problem. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't know that I want to take that chance on right. give, say, saying or doing the wrong thing and it wasn't even me. Well, you, you know, like you've heard me say a thousand times, you get what you pay for. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, I do some of your social media, you do some of mine, you know, like so that during the day we can get some stuff out. Right. But um, I don't know I that think, I want anybody I else doing it. I think all things it. considered, being that we do it ourselves, we manage to get you know some things out, which is good, but not nearly as much as we should be doing. Right. So it's just one more thing that like you kind of have to be a little more on top of, especially with what we do with the shows and all that. Yeah. And now with our new show coming up, it's like you know we're going to have to really start pushing with yeah. that stuff as well. So maybe that, we can. That's going to be exciting. Maybe to, we can whine a little bit and have them do it for us. Like the. One yeah. of the, you know, the... That would be good. <laughs> I think that should be like, you know, in the contract. I think, you know... Yeah. That, yes! should, that should have been written into. <gasps> what a great idea. Yeah, why did we not... No, that's it? just... No, that's just... A, no, that's not the contract it would be in. It would be the next one. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I think that's a great idea. See, the funny thing is, in most entertainment contracts now, they they put that in for you. Like, they want you to, as part of, you know, signing you to do the show, they want you to agree to be doing, you know, active in social media and promoting all You know that. what, I'll so provide now, the pictures. Now you're getting a promoter and on calendar. Uh, yeah, I don't mind calendar. providing the pictures, because we take pictures everywhere all the time. Yeah. But I want to give it to them and have them post it, them tag it up or whatever, you know, have like a, a responsible adult whose profession is social media right. and is getting paid by somebody else to do it for us. I think that's a great that's idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. Let's implement that. Uh, so, um... Today, I just got the announcement from um, the newspaper that Hillary Clinton has now made history as the first official presidential uh, female candidate. So um, I'm, I know people are, are not happy about her running, but I'm, I'm happy that at least there's a woman um, who has gotten that far. Okay. Well, you know, yeah. good for women, and um, um, that's all I'm going to say for that. Um, also, I'm not voting for just, um, I also just, I had, I had a thought go through my head, but maybe I'll save it for Friday about some of the other stuff that's going on in the world right now. So I'm going to save that. There's a lot of juicy stuff going on. Yeah. I, I wrote notes to myself here. Um, did you write any notes to me? No. You know what I did write a note about is that I could continue to forget to tell people lately about hammernailspodcast.com. Oh yeah. I love that website. What, 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 what? It's hammernailspodcast.com. Oh, hammernailspodcast.com. Yeah. Oh, they you have know. some great stuff on there. Great 
pictures, like all sorts of videos. You know, what they have products, links, like yeah, links, links to the yeah. products that we talk about in the episode. So, like, if you happen to be listening to a particular episode and you're like, oh, shit, I want to get that thing that they were talking about. All you have to do is go to hammernailspodcast.com and then click on the episode summary link. And you're going to see the link directly to what it was that we were talking about. It's really, I make it so like easy for you. And you know what? Nobody has written to me lately because I haven't been pumping up. My meatloaf mess recipe is on there. Really? My meatloaf recipe and some cookie recipes. And I only posted them because they are super fucking outrageous. And I've even gotten a lot of feedback from listeners who have cooked their, the meatloaf and baked the cookies. Right. They are top notch. And if you guys are, like, at a loss for something to uh, make for your family, please go to hammerandnailspodcast.com, and then you can click under Allison's Obsession. Just look under my name at the heading of the page. You do have some good recipes on there, I have to say. Thank you, my love. And I'm going to add to it. But it's that's not too often that you cook, but when you do. You well, make, especially without the kitchen. You make up for the a lack of frequency and quality. So oh, that's say. really sweet, baby. Yeah. You are the most understanding husband I love you so much. But that's much. not going to continue because now that you're getting this gourmet kitchen, you better start cooking. <laughs> you know uh, more of that You stuff. know what? I might enjoy cooking now that mm-hmm. I have a place to put my shit and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to have new things. Yeah. It'll be fun. I like meatloaf and cookies, though. It's a good combination. Yes. Yeah. I can't wait to bake again because I'm Especially getting... Especially like to put my meatloaf in your cookie. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got a nice cookie. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a clown. Uh, a oh special my kind god. Of me. Um uh, okay. <laughs> See, I did it again. You did it again. I'm being such a such a dude tonight. Yes, you are. Um Sorry. we have um some questions that we still had. Well let's get on it then, girl. Alright then, let's roll. Let's do it. When helping people with their homes, they call Skip Bedell. You want to avoid a headache and save money, he's the man to talk to. Skip Bedell. <laughs> Do you have any advice on what to do with an extreme case of puppy biting? They're 15-week-old furniture molding humans. I know they're supposed to bite when they're this age, and we have a million appropriate biting toys, but this is getting ridiculous. I went to the pro. The pro, Denise Herman, who is, she is the dog trainer that I got Kilo from and that we also got Milo from, David Bowie, who now deceased, and his Alive wife, Iman. Oh, wow. So, yeah, she works with it. I was highly, highly impressed when she came over here to work with uh, Milo. You know everything. You know fucking nothing. And that's why there are professionals who do dog training and not just anybody. It's big Kong treat toys, you know, the, the Kong, K-O-N-G, um, and put wet and dry food inside of it and freeze it and dry food on the inside of it. Every single meal. Do that for every meal. Give them each meal... Um, it's rewarding for them. It to- shows them where what they need to be biting on, and it's a reward. So they're getting it's the energy take out. Like two hours. <laughs> yeah, but it's think about the the reason behind the Kong, and it's keeping them busy. They they got that whole. She knows best. If she says that's what you need to do. Absolutely. That's what you need to do. Yes. All right. Okay, so we're gonna get to our next Tip Tuesday, Skip's Tips question. But oh first, yeah, let's hear it. The next question is from Steve Meisner. He has a question for Tip Tuesday. What is the best way? Um, it's a nine one one. His basement flooded. Oh, okay. What's the question? Um, I don't know. His basement flooded. All right. Well, of course you got to get the water out of there, and you got to stop the leak. That's number one. Uh, what is it that he didn't say? What he needs to know? Like nine one one. What? Well, he provided his phone number, but in the absence of calling him. <laughs> All right. Well, I imagine you, I imagine Steve, you've probably already taken measures to uh, to remove the water, and then hopefully you've found out what has caused the leak, and you've done something to stop that and shut it off or whatever. Uh, depending upon how much water you got in that basement, whether or not it's finished is going to be two different ways on how you handle it. But obviously, if it's finished, you got to cut back all the drywall. You got to get rid of everything that got wet well above wherever the water line was. And uh, get your dehumidifiers uh, running, your air movers and fans, and you know get the place wet vacked out. I don't know exactly what it is that you're looking to talk about specifically. I mean, there's a lot of different things that have to happen when you when you have a flood like that inside the house or mold prevention and everything else. So um, I will tell you that anything that got wet, any structure, any wood, of course, 
uh, needs to be opened up and aired out completely and then get a good antimicrobial afterwards and clean everything down to prevent any mold. Um, you got to get the moisture out of there. And that fogger that you have is a great thing for. Yeah, we can put like a that, link right? to the fogger. Uh, that's something that comes really very much in handy whenever you have a flood in the house or pipe leaks inside a wall or anywhere that's tough to get to places. Uh, I have this machine that is uh, it's it uses the antimicrobial uh, fluid. Professional it, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like a, you know very and I got high, it on very I got high it on concentration, Amazon. but you know it's like what the uh, the restoration people use the come in and do like you know mold uh, abatement and stuff like that and basically what they do this isn't the homeowner shit this is like the real professional you turn the fogger stuff. on and it basically gets into all the places that you can't get to you know it like it gets in between all the planks all the floorboards everywhere and that fog seeps in with all the fluids that kills mold anyway uh, hopefully that you've got to that point where you stop the water and you got everything that's wet out of the house that's the first start and plenty of ventilation and I wish I, you know, I, I knew exactly specifically what your question was, you know, electrical, plumbing, like what is it that we're talking about so I can help you repair it. Um, perhaps if you hear this podcast tonight or tomorrow and you want to message me back with any specific things that you need help with, uh, I don't know if, you know, your yeah, maybe electrical missing. system got wet or if it's, you know, a domestic water leak or if it's a, you know, a... Um, uh, waistline leak, you know, that could be a whole other problem because now you have other matters to deal with if it came from that. So there's a lot of things we could be talking about. So get back to me. Okay. Um, somebody else on, I think it's Twitter, uh, D, Dr. D. Rich. I don't know how to, I don't know, 88. Um, they want to know if anybody tried to fool us on Catch a Contractor with a fake story to get a remodel. Yes. Uh, People have tried, but they didn't get, actually make it to yeah, the we've, show. Yeah, we've gotten a number of them. So we have like a whole department of people that work on our team for that show. You know, it's dozens and dozens of people that help us get that show on the air, of course, that are behind the scenes. And, and part of that is, you know, get, taking in all the stories, like the casting of the show, where they write into that website that you see on the bottom of the screen, the ticker that we run whenever the Catch a Contract is on. That's where we get our stories from the viewers. And a lot of them have to be weeded out. Um, you know, they go through all sorts of different background checks and legal checks. And many of the stories that have come through have been found out to be like the people were already a money, uh, awarded money like a year prior in court. And the contractor, oh, forget to the contractor that? paid restitution, but they never used the money to fix the house. They, you know, they smoked it or whatever they did with it. And then they're still saying that the contractor, you know, that we're going to go chase the contract so we can fix their house for free. There's been a number of those. Um, yeah, I think anytime people have the opportunity to get something for free, you can pretty much expect they're all yep. going to come crawling out of the woodwork. All kinds. So, yes, the answer yeah. is absolutely yes. You know, I also had seen online people were suspicious that um, Mario and his wife might have been in cahoots with um, Manny. Manny, yeah, and pretending that you know they were being fooled by him. Um, I can tell you firsthand, I was in that room during the sting and. I, I was right there in between man um, Mario and his wife, and yeah. he was hurting. He was like, I felt so bad for him. He was like holding back tears, like for real. He was turning red. He was really upset. Like he's not an actor. He's right. just a guy. You I was know, say, and, he'd have to be like you know an Academy Award winning actor to, yeah. to pull that off. You know, yeah, like, no, there, he there's wasn't. a lot of emotions that run high in that show, and yeah. you know, there's a lot of tears and a lot of anger and a lot of. Everything and you and plus the, just the scene alone in their house when he confronted him, you can see the anger. You know, it was like we were there and yeah. it was real. Yeah, there was no bull, bullshit about. Yeah, that. I, I I can say that uh, the people that again that do all the screening for the show have done a very good job in because we really haven't had many cases to where we got into filming and then realized you know except for like season two you know the. Uh, the Floyd's episode that we realized there was some things that they weren't completely uh, forthcoming with. Um, but for the most part, everything that, you know, all the stories that we've, we've dealt with, uh, they are exactly as you see them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, especially that one though, that he was very emotional because a lot of the times in, in the sting, some of the people, you know, they're just sitting there and they're like, ah, oh, that guy's a liar, you know, like, and they're watching, but he was like the closest, like he to crying and to like oh, yeah, breaking. He, was, he actually went to push the monitor 
off the table. Right, <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's not your monitor. Right, you know, right, like, right, you'll right, break your own right, shit, right, not right. ours. You know? Our security guys had to like hold them back. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. He's like, let me at him, let me at him, I'll kill him. I know, him. <laughs> I know. He was like trying to get out of the yeah. room. He wanted to go, and uh, we we're like, no, 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 no. You're gonna, <laughs> gonna stay right here. Yep. Well, Manny was uh, definitely a rare case. He's yeah. the only one that we actually caught twice. It was dumb enough to keep going and keep doing it. So, yeah. Um, <sighs> Peter Gruenwald said he's upgrading his electrical. What's the best way to pull cable? Uh, well, I guess that depends on what we're we're talking about. Where you're going, if you have conduit that you're working with there in that house, or if you're just going like regular Romex through uh, wood construction, and um, in many cases, what electricians will do, especially if you're pulling for high hats, ceiling lights, or from first floor to second floor, or from basement up through the uh, to the main floor, wherever your panel is, uh, sometimes they'll cut channels along in the drywall, and then they can drill their holes through the studs and get to where they need to go to pull their wires through. And then it's only a very small slot, so to speak, that we can fill back in, like a three inch wide by you know, whatever the length is, eight inch across the board, uh, eight foot across the board that we take out in one piece and then they can drill their holes through all the studs, pull their wires. That's one way to do it. You'll get a little collateral damage on the walls when we have to go back and spackle and paint and, and that type of thing as opposed to, you know, taking all the walls out or um, some some uh, structures obviously are going to be easy to snake through than others. Uh, so it kind of really depends on what type of construction that you have there. But electricians have a lot of different tricks that they use, fish tapes, um, snakes, uh, different flexible type of fiberglass rods that we use with hooks on them uh, that thread into each other. So I have a set like that. It's, a, it's a, actually a quarter-inch fiberglass rod, quarter-inch diameter, and I have, I think, four or five, um, maybe four-foot lengths that all thread together from end to end. And if you put them all together, you've got about 20 feet of flexible quarter-inch fiberglass rod that as you pass it down through a hole or up through a hole, it'll flex through wherever it's got to go, and then you run out of rod. You know, you're at the end of the wall, and you need a longer rod, then you just thread the next one on. You keep sending it in, and when it finally comes out where you want it to, uh, it's got a hook on the end of it, and then you can put your wires, uh, you know, attach them to that and pull them back through, snake them back through your wall. So there's a lot of different tricks that electricians will use, um, but, you know, without having more information from what you're telling me, I would say some of the things that I just mentioned to you are probably your your best bet. And if you want to get back to me again, it's another question. Sometimes I need a little more detail with these questions so I can better help you. But if you want to message me uh, tomorrow, I'll be happy to give you some more information if I can. You're so nice. Um, Ryan Dillon said that he is replacing all the fascia on his house and he needs to cut a half-by-half uh, half half channel in a two-by-eight. Uh-huh. Probably about 150 linear feet. What's Good the, Lord, that's a lot of channel. What's the best tool to use? Uh, table saw with a dado blade. So table saw with a dado setup, basically you can use that to notch out a channel, uh, you know, like a rabbit, like a, basically like a dado, a slot out of a piece of wood um, that you can set to different widths. And when you set that up on your table, table so you take your regular blade off and you put the dado set up on it, and you can take out, you know, uh, uh, all different widths of, of that wood and set the depth of it as well with the depth on the blade, the depth, depth adjustment on the table saw, the height of the blade. So that would actually be the perfect tool to do that with. Another thing you can do is run a router down it, you know, set up a, a, a stop on the uh, on the material, on the piece of lumber, and take your router, um, you know, with a, uh, with a, with a, uh, a blade in it that you can use to plunge you know, plunge down through it, whatever the depth of the channel is that you need, and run that down the length of it. But I think the easiest tool uh, to do uh, would be, if you have a table saw, to set it up with a dado blade. Okay. There you go. Just run your lengths all the way through, one at a time. And rip them right out. They'll all be exactly the same width, the same depth. They'll be identical. And when you run them up against the fence, there's really no, you know, no room. There's no, there's no error involved because they're all going to be cut the same way. So when you line them up end-to-end end at 150 linear feet of, of 2 by 8 the slots are all going to line up. Okay. There you go. You know, I just put a post out right now because we were talking about it and talking about it and talking about it and didn't do it yet. So if my phone rings from Facebook Messenger, I'm going to answer the call. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. I put it out there. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. I hope they know how to do it. <laughs> I hope people are paying attention. What do you got next there? I hope I have Facebook friends. Okay. The next one is Sonali. 
I know. Hi, Sonali. Oh, my goodness. Wow, long time no hear from her. Yeah. Hey, Sonali. She built a pergola. Uh, no, <laughs> she didn't build a pergola. I was going to say, said, wow. I, I know she worked at Home Depot there for a while, no, but, but uh, she's, yeah. she's pretty handy. Yeah, the, Skip knows her from Home Depot, and she's also an amazing cook, and she used to bring in, like, food for everybody. Amazing cook. Yeah, I used to love it when she bring in food, man, because she oh, cooks yeah. every night. She makes, like, a full dinner for her family, and, and like, and you know, she, she would bring in, like, leftovers and or whatever. And then you'd take her. stuff home yeah, to me. Yeah, totally. Yeah, she makes some amazing yeah. food. <laughs> We've had lots of post-coital Sonali food. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Thanks, Sonali. <laughs> Because I get really hungry afterwards. Yeah, I'm, and you I'm would, like, like bring it over I'm to me. I'm just, like, raiding the refrigerator. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, like, do shots of, like, ketchup or whatever is in there just to, like, you know, uh, I don't even care. Like, I just yeah. eat calories in me afterwards. And then, like, of course, there's the Tupperware full of, like, something that Sonali made. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. I got that. Yep. And you know what is really interesting about Sonali is her name. S-O-N-A-L-I. If you chop her name in half and switch it around, it's Allison. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> See, now only the private investigator side of you would know how. Like, you just, you know. Yeah. 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 You just take things apart in your mind and manipulate them and put them back together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. That's too much. Yeah. Um, somebody wrote. So, I, what is her question? Oh. Oh. How about that? Okay. Let me get back to her question. Stand by. <laughs> I lost my place. Really? Yeah, I lost my place. She said. I know Skip built a pergola. Was it difficult? I would love one for my yard. Um, there are all sorts of great programs you can go online. You can look at Pinterest. You can look at – you can even just like Google. Uh, you'll see people on YouTube that have uh, filmed all different types of projects that have made some very simple and some very ornate and very detailed depending upon what you want, what your taste is, and how you're going to attach it to your house or if it's going to be freestanding. Um, they're not really that difficult to build. It's not like building, you know, a full structure like a house because it's, you know, there's no walls on it. It's basically just like the the skeleton of, of a, a structure, and, and you know, in most cases, you're building some form of roof on it, either like a ridge roof or like a shed roof or however you're going to pitch it. But typically, um, you know, if there's no roof cover on it at all and it doesn't have to shed any water, it's really just you know like rafters across the top of your beams that can even be uh, level to the ground or parallel to the ground so it doesn't require a lot of carpentry skills you just need to know the materials and you need to follow some directions so there's, i'm sure there's a million great plans out there mm. of pergola you could probably even get them in the home centers that have so like if, if, garden projects and things like how that how would you rate the level of difficulty for somebody with no um, I would say it's a project for the weekend that is going to take a couple of people. You know, maybe like uh, her husband is also really handy. I know he, he's involved with uh, – he builds something. I forget if he's in cabinets or what, what it is that he does. I met him. Super nice guy. Um, it's a project that you two guys could definitely do like in a weekend. You know, figure out the design that you like. Go online see if you can get, you know, a little uh, set of plans to build something. And it's probably like a two-day deal. You know, you got to set your posts in concrete, let them set, come back the next day and frame this thing up. But, you know, if you got some basic tools like a circular saw and some, you know, hammers or uh, pneumatic nailers and you can go out and get some uh, lumber, um, you're, I would tell you that you'd want to definitely use either pressure-treated lumber or some cedar or redwood, something that's, you know, kind of – We'll hold up to the elements and, and a little more impervious to insect damage and things like that. Um, I actually built mine and a number of others at a pressure-treated lumber, let it dry out for a week or so, and then actually go back and put on a, a semi-solid stain or some sort of sealer right over that pressure-treated lumber, um, which once it's dry, you can do that, uh, but it takes time to let it dry. And that's a great way to make sure that wood's not going to rot because it is exposed, and especially if it doesn't have a roof cover over it. It's going to get wet a lot, so you want to make sure you use the right kind of wood. But you got my number. Give me a call. I'll be happy to uh, even shoot you some drawings or something. Holla. How's that? Holla. Autograph set of plans. <laughs> okay. Uh, Michael Estridge. And by the way, she's been asking us to come over to eat. I know. I so, know, Sonali, I know. listen. Pick a specific day and give us a specific invitation, and we will make sure to be there. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Love to see them. I'd love to have somebody cook for us. We haven't had a kitchen in months. <laughs> yeah, true. True. And who better to do that? Yeah, than the queen of all cooking. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. Michael Estridge asked, I want to restain our stair railing with a darker stain. 
Will I need to remove the railing or can I do it as is? How time consuming will this be? If I were guessing, I would say we have about 24 feet of railing. This is another one of those questions that, like, you know, I really need to know more about the railing. If we're talking about a railing that bolts onto the wall that runs up your interior staircase with, like, railing brackets um, that can fairly easily be unbolted and taken off out of the house and worked on, I would always suggest that you do that so you're not worrying about protecting your stairs or carpeting or flo- whatever the treads are finished with or whatever from getting stain on it. Anytime you can eliminate the possibility of getting you know, damaging the surroundings, it's great to remove those things, which is why, like, when I do trim work, you know, all my crown, all my casings around doors and windows and base moldings for floors and all the finished trim I do, and that's one of the things that I do a lot of, I I love to do finish work, I pre-paint, pre-stain as much as I possibly can before I ever get to hanging any of that wood. I pre-paint it, pre-stain it, cut it to size, and then hang it all finished so I don't have to go back and worry about taping off the walls and dealing with all that stuff. So similar situation with your stair rail. Now, staring, uh, stair railings could be very detailed. They could have, you know, millions <gasps> Wait a of- minute. We're getting a phone call. Really? Stand by. <laughs> Let's see about this. Let me see. Oops. Are you there? Hello? <gasps> I'm here. It's our first phone call. <laughs> Is this Allison? Yeah. Who's that? It's Chad. How are you? It's Chad. Remember Chad? Of course. Hi, Chad. How you doing, man? Hey, uh, just wanted to ask you guys. I've had some problems with my uh, roof, and it's it's still leaking, even though we've got drip edge. And I don't know what to do. Does do you or Skip have any uh, ideas or tips? Can you tell me a little bit more about the leak that you have? Uh, what uh, what what are the what are the symptoms, so to speak? Are you seeing water uh, in the interior of the house, and is it toward the the front, you know, the edge of the roof, or where where are the leaks coming from? Have you identified that? It's on the edge of the, the roof, and um, we had drip edge put in, and it's just it's it's not working out. I so mean, typically. I when we roof like that over the sheathing, uh, typically what we'll do is there, there's a roof edge, like a drip edge, like aluminum or, or galvanized, whatever we use along that edge there that will have a, a drip edge or a flare out to the end of it. Over that, we'll also, uh, you know, we'll seal that with, uh, with a flashing cement or flashing tar, rather, and then come back over that with the underlayment uh, for the roof, whether it's synthetic or tar paper. And that, all of that will actually hang out right to, you know, to that edge or even a little bit past that that edging and then of course come back with a starter course of shingles uh, you know i don't i'm not sure when the roof was shingled last uh but you want to make sure that you have a proper starter course of shingles that's actually like a second layer before you actually shingle the roof that goes all along the perimeter of the roof um so without knowing a little bit more seeing it like roof you know diagno- diagnosing roof leaks can be a tricky thing even when you're on the roof and you're physically looking at it so just from what you're telling me, um, it's kind of hard for me to give you a definite answer. Uh, but I would tell you that you're definitely going to want to – are you getting water in, inside the house or is it coming down in the soffits or where are you seeing it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll send you a video, Skip. Yeah, send me a that picture, man. I'll, I'll be happy to take a look at it for you. and Then maybe I can give you some more information. Woo! All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, oh, our of, pleasure. Of Thanks course. for calling. How you doing? You uh, every, everything yeah. going good? We see you a lot on Facebook. We we appreciate you following us and always oh. giving us some questions and stuff. Oh, he hung up. Oh, he did. I don't think he realized that you were still talking to him. Oh, all right. That Chad. was really nice of him to call. So, um, I don't know if you remember where you left off on that other question. <laughs> what was the question? The question was about the railing. Oh, yeah, so the railing. So stair railings can be really detailed. I mean, you know, without knowing what kind of railing you have there, are there spindles that are attached to it? Uh, You know, is it something that you can actually just physically unbolt from the wall and it's not all part of a railing system? Uh, Without knowing that, I don't want to necessarily go ahead and tell you to remove it from the stairs (laughs) unless it's something that is, you know, removable without uh, having to get into a whole production. If that's the case, then you may want to just you know, take your time and spend a couple hours and really kind of safe everything off and tape everything off and, you know, take your time and do a neat job. But in most cases, especially when you're staining, even more so than painting, there's a lot of preparation uh, that's involved with staining. You know, it's got to be sanded properly. It's got to be conditioned properly. You have to get the wood ready to accept that stain. 
and um, you know, of course, all the all the steps that go into that, and it's it's kind of time consuming, and it's also can be a messy process. So, again, if there's any way you can get that railing off the house, it's you know lowers your your chances for getting uh, that stain and all the other products that you'll need to use and sanding dust and everything else in the house. So that would be my recommendation. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Bob you Park. sent me a picture. Like, there's another one of those questions. If you could send me Come a picture to your of what you have, um, I message it to me or whatever, and I'll be happy to expand on that if once I see what you have. Okay. Bob Park. Hi, Allison. Hi, Skip. Hi, Bob. <laughs> uh, Skip, what's the best way to apply water-based polyurethane? I was doing a project, and I found that it's too thick to spray with a Prevel sprayer because it orange peels, yet when I thin it out, it runs and leaves drop marks. The instruction says to use foam, a foam brush to apply, but that leaves bubbles. What do you suggest for my next poly project? Okay. Well, first of all, polys, you know, oil basin, water based or waterborne, as they're otherwise known, are you know two totally different animals. Um, the oil base, of course, is going to leave a little bit different appearance and color. It's going to give kind of an amber. Uh, you know, hue to the wood as well, and it takes much longer to dry. So you probably already determined that you want to use water-based uh, polyurethane for the reasons that it dries very quickly. So rather than getting in like one coat a day, because typically with oil base you got to wait like you know seven, eight hours, nine hours between coats to let it completely dry, sand, and then do multiple coats after that. Wait for drying time between each one. So it can be you know a day or two process to do a couple of coats with oil base. Whereas the water base, you can actually get in three or four, which is typically recommended with water base, four coats um, uh, in one day, you know, because it only requires like an hour or two hours min- you know, maximum uh, for drying time. It actually dries really fast. So now that I told you everything you probably already know, uh, as far as the application, yeah, they will recommend that you use like a foam uh, pad applicator. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. I would prefer a brush if you get a really good stain quality brush. Um, and as far as getting bubbles in waterborne, that's something common that if you shake the uh, the waterborne uh, urethane, if it gets moved around too much or it gets shaken, some people will try to shake the yeah, can up. Yeah, don't shake it. Because it, it typically appears like milky when it's coming out of the can. And, you know, so people tend to want to shake it and, 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 you know, and mix it so it's not going to be milky. It's always going to be milky until it gets on the material and starts to set up, and then it will turn clear. Uh, but when you shake it, you're always going to get bubbles. So be sure that you don't do that. If anything, you can stir it slowly, uh, but never shake water-based urethane. So as far as spraying it, if you want to spray it, uh, rather than using like a, a regular paint sprayer that you would use on a, an air compressor, um, I would suggest that you use a, an HVLP, which is a high-volume, low-pressure gun. It's designed more for thicker materials. Um, it's, it's exactly what it says. It has a high-volume flow to it, but low-pressure and uh, there are a couple of different machines that you can get out there. If you do a little research and look into HVLP machines, you'll see that you know the prices really range. Um, Wagner actually makes a, a relatively inexpensive one that you can get at the home stores. Um, I think they call it the Fine Coat. There's a couple of different models that they make that you can actually put the material right into the unit, and it has like a um, kind of like a pump rather than uh, a compressor. There's also gravity-fed ones like uh, DeVilbis, uh, D-E-V-I-L. B-I-S-S. That was the, uh, I had one of their humidifiers in my room since I was like a toddler. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, now you can spray paint your room with the same thing. <laughs> yeah, they make a great gravity feed setup. Hold on, we're getting another phone call. Stand by. Hello? Allison. Hi. It's, it's Brian Cole. Hey, it Brian Cole. How you doing, man? What's up, brother? Dude, I, I'm just waiting to uh, to hear you shred out. Like, I always see stuff with your music and everything on Facebook and stuff. I just, uh, I'm just looking forward to hearing you play some music. Oh, thank you, brother. Well, I'm, I'm signing a new record deal. <gasps> um, awesome. Yeah. I just, um, actually, we, uh, we, sent, um, we, we sent the label a few songs that we had finished mixing, and uh, they were so stoked about it. They were like, we, we have to have you on the label. How so, cool is oh, that, man? Oh, wow. That's Fantastic. Great. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. So it's so competitive, and, it's and oh, my God, that's a really huge accomplishment. Good for you. That's great, Thank man. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. So what, what kind of question you got? Well, I, you know, I wanted to keep this um, kind of in the, you know, the hammer and nails kind of thing. 
So, well, that's um, an easy answer. Nine inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even need to hear your question. Yeah. This kind of goes. This kind of goes in line with uh, you know Skip with you, and then also with with Allison being a PI. You know, I, I think that this would be um, a question for the both of you. So, cool. Shoot. Uh, the question. Okay. How many chucks would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck? <laughs> really, dude? <laughs> That's great, man. Uh, I, I had to be, I, listen, I had to be a smart ass. That's <laughs> awesome. That, how cool is that? Well, I already have your answer. I just said it before. Nine. There you go. Okay, great. The answer is nine. So, that's well, let me ask you a question. How many licks did it take to get to the center of a charmed blow pop? <laughs> oh, boy. You know, if, if we weren't on the air, I'd have an answer for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, Molly, Molly would hit me in the head with something. You know? That's She'd great, like, man. What are you talking about? You know? yeah. so, that's all right. You, you can say that on this podcast. <laughs> oh, okay, great. You know, it only takes a couple, baby. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Atta boy. It only takes a couple. Get the job done right and quick. There you go. That's right. Ah. That's right. Well, listen, I, I miss you both on, on, on your show. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a longtime friend, and I'm, and I'm proud to call you guys my friends. And um, so, you know. Hope to see you guys doing more stuff. I think you've got a great thing going with the podcast, and I just encourage more people to tune in and and listen to what you guys have to say because you're both awesome. Oh, thanks, uh, thank man. you so much. Really, yeah, we really appreciate you. You've always been a big supporter of us right through the show and the podcast. And uh, thanks so much, man. And please send us whatever info you can on your music. Uh, yeah, we'll you, share it when Absolutely. you're getting ready to release stuff, and we'll be happy to uh, plug you up as well. Yeah, we're gonna. Th- th- they're, the label's going to do, you know, kind of an official release and everything like that. So um, as soon as that happens, I'll, I'll private message you guys and um, and I'll let you know what's going on. But, well, great. Uh, well, maybe you know, when you have your big, you're yeah, maybe when you have your big release, you uh, take a trip out to New York or, uh, you know, if you're in L.A., yeah. wherever wherever we happen to be at the time, and you can give us a live performance on the show. You got it. Absolutely. Well, I, I have a lot of friends. Uh, I have a lot of friends in the city and everything. And, oh, and, cool. Uh, I love getting up. I, I mean, I just live in Pittsburgh, so... For oh, me, right on. Oh, not far. Nothing, so. All right, well, let us know when you're yeah, in town, man. So. Oh, great. You got it. Thanks so much All for right, calling. Man. We really appreciate it. All right, God bless you. Take, care, Take care, Brian. Thanks. Take care, Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Ah. Brian Cole. Yeah, two Coles in a row. Chad Ta- Cole and then Brian Cole. Yeah, talented musician right there. Yes. Yeah, songwriter, musician, really a uh, talented guy. Yes. Yep, always been a big supporter of us, so... Wow, yes. there, Brian. It's very nice. So where was I? I don't know. I was elaborating on, uh, I think, water-based. Yes, uh, and that's pop- a really good question, too, because anybody who's ever tried to apply that stuff knows yeah. that it gets bubbles. It's awesome. Actually, it's really great because it dries so fast. Now, you know, they recommend that you put on, first, of course, you always have to use staining. You always want to make sure you raise your grain. Uh, on the wood and you want to make sure you use a conditioner and you get your stain on that's going to really raise the grain up um, give it a light sand uh, also you're going to want to sand between coats of course but I think your problem you probably already know all of this because if you're already getting to urethaning um, so your problem was getting uh, orange peel and, and having a problem with it running and things like that okay what I can tell you is that you're going to have a lot less of that problem with an HVLP gun uh, number one Secondly, you want to also make sure the ambient temperature in the room is at the right point for when you're going to be spraying or applying a waterborne urethane. Um, The best temperature that you're going to be working with is between like 60 and 70 degrees. If it's a lot warmer than that in the room and you don't have, you know, uh, good ventilation, you're going to wind up having the urethane dry too quickly. Because the waterborne dries so fast, it will also tend to orange peel when it dries too fast. You want to really kind of wet that surface up. And you want to lay it on heavy enough to where it's not going to run on a vertical surface, but it's not going to dry too fast that it's going to orange peel. So it takes a little bit of practice. Guys, to finish furniture, uh, it, it's, it's a skill. You know, it takes time. You're going to have to really get familiar with your gun and learn how to adjust the settings on it with the, uh, with, you know, with the ratio and the mixtures. And once you get familiar, and oh, by the way, on your gun, make sure you're using the right tip for a waterborne urethane because the spray tip on, uh, on the guns, you can get different tips or some of them are adjustable. And you want to make sure you have it either on the right setting or the right tip that allows the right amount of material to come out because that will also 
uh, you know, make a big difference in the finish. Um, and what else did I want to say to you? There's one other thing. Um, let's see. The, oh, the product itself. I don't know what you're putting through that gun, but, you know, everybody uses like a Minwax. It's off the shelf from a hardware store, a paint store. Um, Minwax in particular, it's a good product overall. They tend to be a little bit watered down. They're a little bit thin than some of the others. And uh, what you might find is you're going to experience a running or some of the other problems that you mentioned with that product. You might want to try out Olympic or General also makes some really good Warner Born products. Ryan Stenger is calling us. Check out the General High Performance. Ryan? Yes? How you doing? I'm great. I've got a interesting question about reclaimed barnwood accent walls oh cool awesome let's hear that one so i've got a good wall for it and, and my question is i've got a couple of friends with farms that are all offering me all kinds of different stuff can we make friends with them too yeah you're a lucky They're guy friends. <laughs> I've got a lot of old wood i've got a lot of old barns wow I've got some dried stuff that's been going for lucky 25 years but nice does this all need to be kiln dried before it goes up on my wall I would definitely make sure that it's, that it's dried out, is adequately dried out, yeah, before you hang it up on the wall for a lot of reasons, especially if you're going to apply any sort of finish to it or if you're using any sort of adhesive. There's, you know, also just moisture inside, trapped inside the wood. If it's been outdoors and it has moisture in it, just like if you bring in like a wet piece of wood in the house, like a log or firewood or whatever, you're bringing that moisture into your house and everything that comes along with the moisture. So, um, I, depending upon how wet it is, I don't know that I'd go as far to kiln dry it. But I would certainly make sure it's, it spends some time out in the sun and it gets dried out before you bring it in. So it's been in an old barn for 25 years. Inside. Ah, like okay. Like they're drying out for like 20 years. Okay? okay. But the concern is less of the, the moisture for me at this point than it is of some type of bugs? insect. Yeah, I was thinking about yeah. the bugs too. Yeah. Well, that is a concern. I mean, you know, it, it's... Especially with wood like that, many times can be uh, subject to uh, termites or carpenter ants or you can see those wood worms or whatever. So, you know, most of that stuff is going to come with kind of evidence. You know, you're going to see wormholes on it. You're going to see evidence of you know portions of the wood kind of deteriorated, almost looks like it's crumbly a little bit. If you get a good solid plank that looks like it doesn't have any holes in it or any damage, it's not like sawdust around it and you know, all the things that you would look for for that are, you know, kind of go along with insect damage, chances are you're not going to have a problem with that. It's pretty hard to guarantee it, though, because those little suckers could drill little holes in the wood and get pretty deep in there. But I would I would take a look at where it's coming from and take a look at the surround. Is it still actually hanging or is it has been no, no, stacked? It's, it's all been down. It's been stacked. Okay. In a barn, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, you know. There's a chance that, uh, you know, you're going to get some good solid lumber there and not have, but I would definitely go through it thoroughly and really inspect it, every side of it, and make sure from end to end that you don't see any evidence of that. And if you do, go on to the next plank and leave it, you know, or cut it, you know, because that they can be kind of hard to get rid of. And the last thing you want is like, you know, a nest of that hatching in your house once you hang it on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Right. I've got a two-month time limit by my wife, so if I have to kill and dry anything of my own, it that time limit so. right yeah well if you got to kill them by all means i mean that'll take care of the problem right there yeah you all know? right guys well i appreciate the help absolutely hey thanks for calling thanks for the questions and uh, uh happy to help anytime brother thanks both of you thanks take, take care man bye 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 <gasps> it's lynn Steele. lynn Steele. is this lynn Steele? it is lynn Steele. is this the author lynn Steele? <laughs> Lynn's, I'm me, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm I know. Me, but I'm not, but I am. That's so cool. So proud of you that you got that done. This is our good friend Thank Lynn you. Steele that we're talking to right now. Our on forever the... uh, follower since the beginning of Catch a Contractor time. Yeah. It is indeed. Yeah. yeah. It is. I told my mom I was calling, so mom said to say hi, and she loves you. Oh, oh well, that's sweet. That we love her, too, and make sure you give her a big hug for me as usual. As usual, every time I give her one, she lights up like a little Christmas. Oh, good. That's great. That's great. So I had to send my love from mom. That's so nice. How are you doing up there in Canada? Oh, doing amazing. Doing amazing. Good. Watching, you know, we're 
keeping mom happy with her reruns of Catch a Contractor, of course. Oh, ah. yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you for watching, as usual. And hopefully we'll have another show out on the air fairly soon that you can watch. Awesome. We my are. Says, oh, Allison's so beautiful, and that's Skip. Oh, my. Uh. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's really nice. She's the we best. All, of course, we all think you're the greatest. Ah, thank uh, you. That's so nice. Thank you so much. You've always been a big supporter of you and uh, your your Canadian friends up there, and we, we really appreciate it for all the stuff that we're doing. So thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, thanks for sticking with us. And we'd love to give your, your oh, book a, a plug again, as we've done a couple of times. Tell us the name of your, of your book again. Thank you so much. It's called I'm Me, But I'm Not. And it's a story about her being a, an adopted child. Which, and I, which I love, by the way, because I don't know if you're aware of the fact or not, but I'm adopted as well. And um, She was not aware. I, I have been going... I was not aware. Yeah. There's a very big, long story about this that we have not gotten into yet because we're waiting for the right moment. Yeah. But there's right. going to be like a story reveal and so that's forthcoming in the future. We're not sure in what forum or how we're going to tell it, but it's a story that is going to, like, have you, like, glued to your seat and crying, and it's just it's such an awesome story. Well, I won't give too much away, wait. but you could kind of use your imagination, but I will tell you that... Um, I'm going to bleep out whatever you tell her right now so that everybody else can't hear all, it. All, all I'm going to say is that, you know, I was I was uh, given up uh, for adoption at birth uh, the moment I, I, I was born. Uh, you're yeah. killing me! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good one. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a really, good really good story. <laughs> and, I mean, it's such a good story that it's – and there's so many details. It's just we're, like, waiting for the right place to tell it because it's just too good of a story to just tell on a podcast. And I think I did mention this in the book as well. It's crazy. Like, we figured out that when – right before my mom and dad adopted me, they were actually living a few blocks away from where my mother lived. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, and then they moved to Aurora, and they got me. And then the, here's the bizarre part, because where my mother was is only, like, not even half an hour drive away from here. Wow. And it turns out that where she was living, my husband grew up right down the freaking road, like two blocks away. Wow. Isn't it so crazy how stuff like that happens? You know, you talk about all the degrees of separation and, like, you know, how yeah. people are linked to each other. And, yeah. you know, it's, it really is such a small world when you think about it. Yeah, yeah we were talking the to an author me. as well. Yeah, it's definitely book-worthy. It's, it's a, the only thing that I regret is that my dad didn't get to see it finished. I know you went through so, a tough time with that. I remember uh, while we were airing the show, you had, I think, messaged me on uh, on Twitter, and and uh, yeah. we, we were real sorry to hear about your dad. Uh, he sounded like a, a great guy. Oh, it was, just, it was just awful, you know. It was just something I never thought I'd have to deal with. You don't think you'll have to deal with it. You know it's going to come, but you just, you're not ready for it, even if you're ready for it. Sure, you know? yeah, you're never really ready for that. No, and I had just, I had just set up his, TV, uh, if you remember. I had yeah, TV I remember. TV yeah. In the hospital because he's like, I can't miss it. Because he wanted now, to watch Catch a Contractor. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, no uh, kidding. A guy's on his deathbed in the hospital. He's like, I got to watch my Catch a Contractor. I can't uh, miss Skip that's an so, Alpha. That's, that's um, awesome. Gosh. Uh, <laughs> that's so, so nice. So, you know. But, I mean, hey, that's how much of a, an impact that you guys have on people, even just people watching TV that don't even know you. Wow. Well, no. we're totally knowable, though, you know, like I feel like we've oh, always been so accessible online. Yeah, we try to really interact with people. And, you know, it's uh, yeah. the thing that we do, like, you know, we we just we love helping people. And that show really was a great platform to be able to do that, like on a, on a mass scale, because not only like all the people that we help actually on the show, but, you know, yeah. well over a million people every week watch that show. And now it's, yep. uh, it's syndicated around the world. It's actually playing in, in just about every country around the world. Everywhere but here. Yeah. <laughs> if you're playing in Canada, <laughs> you guys get to see it. We're not even seeing it right Assholes. now. Assholes. Oh, God. Oh, no. Well, we are getting it, so we're happy about that. We're, yeah, thank you very much again for all the support you guys give us. And you and, uh, and, and your mom and all your friends up there in Canada, we really love you guys. And we really very much appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for calling us, too. We appreciate it. 
I love you guys so much, and I just wanted to make sure that I got my little scooch in there to say how much I love you guys. <laughs> Thanks again for calling. My, you are so welcome. I got more little gifts I'm going to be sending you guys, so I'll let you know when they're on their way. Oh, oh, that's so sweet. You're, Thank you're you, Lynn. The best. <laughs> All right. Okay. Love you guys. Love you too. Talk love to you, you soon. Have a good night. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, she's another one. Right from the get go, she was one of with our us. earliest yeah. fans of the show. Like you know, we we don't we, you know she her, there was a whole flock of Canadian fans that, that uh, like really got really behind our show. Catch yeah. a contractor like a couple of years ago when we first started airing it. Yeah, and uh, they're they're just like the nicest people up there. Yes. You know, and man, they just love Catch a Contractor. I actually um there, there's other another couple that are friends with her. Um, Jen Savage. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Uh, I think it's Sparazzi. No, or? I thought it was S A V A D I. Oh, right. right. Uh, Gee, it's not in front of me. Yeah. Yeah, Canada. And um, they Jeez. sent us, they were fo- since season one, they oh, were I following us. And they sent us a homemade Christmas card. That was the best. And I her cr- husband made like caricatures of us. And I cried when we read it. I totally cried because it was just so sweet and the nice things that people Savati, were sending us. The Savati, Jennifer. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and I was just so touched that people were so nice and they were saying nice things to us online and they people sent us Christmas cards and – I just, I never, well, I yeah, never. Yeah, they sent us Christmas cards, picture of their family and their Watching tree the show. Watching the show. Yeah. They would send us a, a number of different things, right? Like, uh, uh, I think her husband made that, those, uh, they were kind of like, um, what do they call them? Like, um, your avatar? They were like yes. avatars, yes. Right? like a digital uh, like you know, a little avatar of of each of us, of me, you, and Adam. Yeah, I thought that was the coolest. Yeah, thing that was so that so cool, and and just the the, the people that we sent that asked for signed autograph like pictures from us right. then the people were putting them on their wall and taking a picture of it like in their room and right. sending us the picture <laughs> of our picture right. so right. so nice i'm just like sometimes you know because I'm, I'm always the first one to say i hate people <laughs> <laughs> but not those people because well, it just – oh, you, don't, you don't hate the, all people. You hate like douchey people. Yeah, like know? I'm just but saying like, it's like a know. general statement in that I just I, – people just never cease to disappoint me because I'm, I'm always expecting then, people to do – you have like the right. fans of our show that like just surprise They're us. They're the best though. Those because, people. Because like those people who never even met us, you know, most mm-hmm. of them from all parts of the world are like so supportive and yeah. so kind and nice. They the are nicer they than the people that I know in person. Right. You know what I mean? Everyday people that I meet, people even are at work or people that are supposed to be your friends that stab you in the back. These people that we've met through being on the show are, are the kindest people I know. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, what else you got there for me, wife? We'll, well wrap this thing up. We're going to wrap this thing up because I have a lot of editing to do being that um, the first half of the episode was all chunked up. Yeah. So uh, I think we're talking about going back to. Uh, we're gonna to go to Joe's studio for the next episode. Show to the Joe's studio. Yeah. So Friday's episode, yeah. we're actually back with uh, with JC. We're gonna yeah. Be back in the studio with uh, with our buddy Joe. That's gonna be great. Yeah. Yeah. It's and been um, a few months since we recorded with him. So. Yeah. And being that the election's coming up, and he is like. <laughs> oh God. He yeah. Is like, yeah. He's, I, he's, he's like, gonna he, have to squeeze in some of his Trump isms, and. Uh, yeah. He's <laughs> super political and super like you know. If there's anything that we can involve controversy in, he's like on board with us. So yeah, yeah. Don't so, get him started well, around, you know, going on started. too crazy about two. I try to get off the political <laughs> stuff when we're talking to him. Yeah, the whole podcast will be like, you know. Yeah. You know what? This <laughs> bashing whole, Hillary. This whole phone thing was fun and I hope that people that are listening um, keep an eye out on their Facebook for when we put it out there that we're going to take some calls. Because I, I like to talk to the people. Yeah, that was a great way to do it. Yeah. And it's yeah. an easy way for anyone to access it as opposed to like Skyping and things yeah. like that. You have to know the Skype code and you know, the yeah. name and all that. This is just like, you know, a messenger. Yeah. You just ring the phone. and Yeah, it was a pleasant surprise every time the phone rang. So thank you yeah, guys so much. Yeah, the good part is, is that, you know, if you're like a dick or say something really stupid, we'll just edit it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, 
Oh, you know what, guys? We have an Amazon banner at the top of our website, hammernailspodcast.com. Please do us the favor of just dragging it up to your bookmark bar and clicking on it every time you want to shop at Amazon. It really helps us out a lot. And also be sure to look at the episode summaries because if you're interested in any of the products that Skip talked about in this episode, I'm going to provide you a direct link to those things as well. If there's some questions that we didn't answer or get to yet, uh, we're going to get to them if, uh, if we haven't already. And if, uh, if it's been a while, maybe I didn't see your question, and uh, just send it in again. And we want you guys to remember that we really appreciate that you're listening. We appreciate so much if you're sharing it with anybody because yeah, we friends. do it for you guys. Spread the love. Spread the word of uh, hammerandnailspodcast.com. Podcast. I almost said catch a contractor, but this a different show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's new shows. You can tell it's up. been a long day for me. I thought I was on Catch a Contractor for a second. <laughs> and with that, I will say thanks for coming back. We'll see you on Friday. Love you guys. We love you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.